This is a talk on the basic introduction to soil science for gardeners. So soil is formed by the parent material that lies beneath it. It is made up of a mixture of clay, sand and silt. You can have 100% clay soil, um, but this is quite rare. Usually they're a mixture of the three elements. Here on this diagram, you can see a clay loam, which is a third of clay, sand and silt. You've got a loamy sand, which is a, a composition that has the majority of sand with a small amount of clay and silt. There's a soil type called a silty clay loam, which has the majority of silt, a small amount of sand and some clay. And then a typical clay soil, which is three quarters clay with a mixture of sand and silt. So each soil has different, requires different cultivation techniques and timing. A heavy soil, which is typically a clay soil, and it's called a heavy soil because in the old days it would require a heavier, bigger horse to pull the farming machinery to plough it, whereas a lighter soil wouldn't need such a, a heavy horse, it would require a lighter horse. A heavy soil um, has a smaller cultivation window, whereas a lighter soil has a much bigger cultivation window. And this is all to do with the moisture content within the soil or the field. This diagram will show you. So this is in the field where you've got a, the most amounts of water throughout in, in at the point of the year and then as the water sort of infiltrates and trickles down it starts to dry out till it gets to this point called the plastic point. After that it goes into a semi-solid and then you get to the solid. So the cultivation window is between semi-solid and plastic. This is the point where the soil is friable so you can break it up into nice smaller aggregates uh, which is ideal for planting seeds and small crops and small plants. So in the, with a the heavy soil, this is a much smaller window and in, the, in a lighter soil, it's, you've got a much bigger time frame in which you can cultivate it. The reason for this is because a clay soil is made up of particles which are really, really small. So clay particles are much smaller than, sand, than, than the sand particles. A clay particle is around 0.001 of a millimetre. So as a result of that, the, the particles form a clay substance, like a plasticine when wet. Um, but then when it's really dry, it can turn into dust and it's really difficult to cultivate. If you were to cultivate a clay soil when it's too wet, it will probably, you will probably form a pan because all of those particles have just turned into a sludge and when it dries out you'll get this hard crust and it'll be very difficult then to, to break it. So that's why it's important to get that cultivation window right if you are cultivating a clay soil for the first time. If your soil has already been cultivated and it's got what is referred to as a good structure, um, the cultivation window is much wider because it already has been broken up and it supports itself and it's more aerated and water just sort of trickles through all of the different aggregates. Clay is a bit more difficult to work with but this is a gardener's hindrance but it can also be a great help to a gardener. Because the clay particle is so small it has an electrostatic charge around it so that means it attracts and holds on to nutrient elements like a magnet. The clay particle is negatively charged and it has and it attracts positively charged nutrient elements. I'll just show you. For example, calcium has a is a positively charged, positive charge. Phosphorus has a negative charge. Potass potassium is positive. Nitrite is negative and nitrate is negative. However, nitrate ammonium is positive. So you may have heard that 
nitrogen, which is good for a green leafy growth, is quite, is quite easily leached from the soil. And that is because it is a, a neg the nitrite and nitrate has a negative charge. So when it's in the soil, and if it's a particularly sort of like a clay loam soil, it has, the clay loam has a great nutrient holding capacity, but it doesn't hold on to the nitrogen in the soil. So when it rains, it will wash the nitrogen away. And this is called leaching. If you're gardening on a, on, a, on a sandy soil or a sandy loam, sand doesn't have any nutrient holding capacity because they're much larger particles. So when you were to put a fertilizer on a clay, on, sorry, on a sandy soil, the sand can't hold on to it. So when it rains, it will just leach away. So it's quite important to have this as an understanding so that you know how much fertilizer to put on or how to improve the nutrient holding capacity of your soil so you can grow better plants in it. Obviously, growing on a sandy soil, it's a really good idea to mix in loads of organic matter because as organic matter breaks down, it forms humus and humus like clay has very small colloidal nature and it holds on to nutrients because it's got that electrostatic charge. So when you were to add a fertilizer or add some manure, once it's broken down, the nutrients won't wash away when it rains. This happens by wonderful, if I get, I've got the right. Here you have a clay mineral and this is the cation exchange complex as it's known. So all, this is a potassium, calcium, magnesium ions, all sort of attracted and held to the clay particle. The plant's root is next to the clay mineral. And interestingly, what the plant does in order to achieve and take the nutrients out of the soil so it can be taken into the plant for its growth, is it shoots out little hydrogen plus ions. These then exchange with the nutrient ion next to the soil particle and it displaces them. So this hydrogen ion displaces this magnesium ion. You can see it's got a two there, so it actually requires two hydrogen ions to displace it. So then this magnesium ion becomes free floating in the soil solution. Then by a process called osmosis, the magnesium ion is absorbed into the plant and it is then used um, to help it grow. As the more this happens, more of these hydrogen plus ions go into the soil. And interestingly, hydrogen plus ions in the soil is a measurement of the acidity of the soil. So pH stands for potential hydrogen. So the more hydrogen ions there are, um, the more acidic it is. So when you were to send, if, you're gonna, if you want a really detailed soil sample, um, really detailed soil record, um, you quite often send it off to the lab and, or a lab. There are other domestic kits on the market, um, but they measure these hydrogen plus ions. Um, so the more there are, the more acidic it is. So they do say that when you have a garden um, or a flower bed and you're, you have grown your plants in there for many years, the pH level of your soil will become more acidic. And that is because it's the plants are shooting out more of these hydrogen plus ions, which make it more acidic. And that's why farmers routinely after a crop will put lime on their field um, to make their soil more around the pH 7 mark um, rather, because it may have dropped to pH 6.5 or even where pH 5 is really acidic. So that's what we do with that. As the pH of a soil becomes more acidic because it's got more of those hydrogen plus ions, the overall nature and the overall charge of the soil changes. So then acidic soils, then acidic soils um, 
hold on to a different selection of elements than alkaline soils. So that is why typically hydrangeas are blue in acidic soils because they hold on to a different set of minerals that would make the hydrangea blue, typically aluminium, whereas all of the other soil um, elements like calcium would be leached away. Whereas in a pH to seven, um, all of the elements are able to are held on by the soil particles and, um, and won't be leached. So here's another diagram. We've got pH 6 and pH 7 and this is they say this is a 6.5 is the ideal um, pH to grow your plants in um, because it's uh, the soil is able to hold on to the nutrient ions um, the most. So we've got nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, sulphur, copper. As it's moving towards pH 5, these, the nitrogen starts to sort of leach away and so does the phosphorus but then aluminium and iron come in and then iron and zinc are really active at a pH 5. So I hope that helps to give you some understanding into why it's important to um, add organic matter to a sandy loam, to, um, to add um, more organic matter also to a clay um, after, after you've cultivated it, um, to, even though clay is quite difficult to garden on, um, it's also a really um, it is a bit of a gift to have in the garden because it's a very nutritious soil so even though it's difficult to cultivate it's well worth it in the end um, but also mulching is is really important as well because every year it's a good practice to put a mulch on because again it adds that organic matter replenishes nutrients and it sort of um, re-establishes a decent ph level and it enables you to have uh, to keep that good nutrient holding capacity so that any other fertilizer you were to put on it it won't just leach away thank you